All right, two public hearings. We really draw them in, don't we? It's close enough to say we're going to get this meeting started. Welcome everybody for a June 6, 2011 meeting. Uh, let's talk about the minutes from our multiple meetings we had uh, in May. Y'all read over them. Got any corrections? I really don't like the. Calling my trip a vacation it was actually a partly business, but I won't change it for the record. I guess it was close enough. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All favor, raise your hand. Okay. It gives us good. Uh, it's my privilege now. We're going to swear in a new alderman. Thank you, Jerry Evans. Is place that's been a hard pill for this group to swallow. Mr. Evans has with us for many years, but the aldermen and women, they worked hard and they worked together and they found what we truly believe is the right person to fill this board. Farrell Jamison has been a Macon County and a Franklin resident most if not all of his life and he's always had his heart and mind on bettering the community. And he's someone that we really feel like can be uh, a good, with his background and his desire, we really feel like he can be a, a good addition to the board. Now, Mr. Vic Perry, our clerk of Superior Court, is here to swear Farrell in, and we want to have that right here in front, I believe, so the cameras and all can capture it. Roll. You got anybody want to stand by your side, Farrell? No. Charlie's up. Charlie, come on up and stand beside. You're a former. That hurt him. I get to meet you, Farrell. I, Farrell Jameson. I, Farrell Jameson. Who solemnly swear. Who solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. I, Farrell Jameson, I, Farrell Jameson, who solemnly and sincerely swear, solemnly and sincerely swear, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance, I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina, the state of North Carolina, and to the constitutional powers and authorities, the constitutional powers and authorities, which are or may be established, which are or may be established, for the government thereof, for the government thereof, and that I will endeavor to support I will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend, maintain and defend the Constitution of said state. Constitution of said state. Not inconsistent. Not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States. With the Constitution of the United States. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. I, Farrell Jameson. I, Farrell Jameson. Do, do swear. Do swear that I will truly and honestly. That I will truly and honestly mean myself in the office of Alderman of the Town of Franklin. Me myself in the office of the Alderman Town of Frank. According to the best of my knowledge and ability. According to the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. They're, they're voters now, you Dick and Farrell grew up about a football field on the way, I think. That's right. Run right through the, the woods. woods. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. You got it. Public hearing uh, on the minimum housing standards. I'll call the public hearing open for business about 7:06. It looks like. Ask if there's anyone here to speak for or against the proposed minimum housing standard ordinance. There's a four vote in the back. She's smiling. I don't think she wants to be the only one to talk. You want to say something else? Sure. 
Um, just that the quick glance that I made through the document looks good, both as a um, person with a rental property and as someone in a, in a neighborhood where there are, are some problems. So I think it's a good first, I think it's a good step. Anybody else to be heard? Going once, going twice. We'll call the public hearing to a close and uh, put it before the board for its consideration. Move to be adopted. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, raise your hands. Opposed? That passes without objection. Okay. Board does good work. That is something that's been needed for a long time and it's a lot of good work. All right, public session. We've got Karen Wallace signed up first. Karen, <coughs> talk to us for a few minutes. I'm here to talk a little bit about the library and our request for the town to continue funding our Reading Rover Bookmobile service that uh, reaches child care centers within the town of Franklin. Um, this past year, the town uh, had provided us $10,000 uh, in funding to support those services. Those services pr uh, support pre-literacy skill development in young children and also provide training and resources to caregivers who work with young children. Um, this year we are requesting a slight increase in that funding. We're asking for $12,000 to continue that vital service um, to people who would not be able to come to the library to get the resources and the training that we provide through our mobile service. We basically take the library to them. We've served um, through the third quarter. Our statistics um, go through uh, March 2011. We saw um, 1,800 people at the story time and uh, different programs that we provided directly to the child care centers. We uh, completed 26, uh, uh, had 26 people complete the training workshops uh, for parents, and we had 16 caregivers complete the training workshops that we provide to help those people work more effectively with children to boost their educational um, uh, basis for pre-literacy skills. Um, we do some surveys with those uh, ch child care providers and we ask them for a little bit of information about how they feel about the service. And we had 100% of respondents indicate that they do find the Reading Rover service helpful in the development of those pre-literacy skills that help children enter school ready to read, write, and learn. We have some comments from those uh, who were surveyed. They said they would be lost without the Reading Rover service and that they feel that the Reading Rover helps to maintain their center of excellence in the area of literacy. This is implemented by providing books, games, music, etc., an overall literacy experience. We think that we do a terrific job of bringing the library to those young children and to their caregivers and parents, and we um, have submitted a request for the town to consider continuing the funding that you have provided for this year. We're <coughs> certainly grateful to you for providing that funding and hope that you will consider um, in, uh, sustaining that funding and possibly increasing it. would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, thank you very much. Don Swanson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, I'm not sure whether this can be done in open session or not, but I'll try anyway. I just discovered that I need an approval today, and it's too late to get it on the agenda. We're having a patriotic rally at the gazebo on Saturday, June, uh, July 2nd. We would like to close Iola Street from Main Street to the entrance of the people's parking lot from 9.30 until 12.30. I make this request on the interest of public safety and request that you approve the street closing. I talked to Chief Bradley and he's, as a matter of fact, he was on who reminded me that I needed to come and see you all this evening. Did so you think you could just close it without asking or not? Well, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought that, well, actually, the Chief thought 
he forgot about the recycling or whatever. Um, and he thought he had the authority to do it, and then he called me this morning and said, whoops. So that's that's the day the people will be closed and they close the deadline on Saturday night. Okay, next Saturday. That's four for the night. Close the motion closed. Monday we can do five minutes, five works. So, you're talking about just really closing Phillips Street, not Main Street. No, I always have. Uh, Iowa, Phillips yeah, on the south side. Yeah, Iowa Street. Just the area between the gazebo and the courthouse. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Keep the safety of everything. Yeah, I'm used to that. Most. All in favor, in hand. All right. We got thank you, you and thank you for all the cooperation you have always given us. We appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's move on to number seven. Jan? Mm -hmm. um, I'll give everybody a copy of the budget amendment. Uh, that first one for the lease purchase proceeds for a vehicle at the police department and it's like a loan, it's like a ward. We'll be getting money and we paid the first plan already. And this is just actually for the county. <coughs> the next one is application fee. That's that 8500 that Verizon had to pay us. And you know last month we approved the part of those two people with that firm that have grouped them with his uh, you know, the application has to go through all the procedures, and these people are trained to do that throughout the state. And then 3500 we got to show his revenue, and then it'll go out in other services on the plan. So. Yes. Yeah. So it's like still going to go so <coughs> And then the North Carolina uh, step grant, we've got 40000 so far, and we've spent quite a bit on signs, but we're not going to be able to get that other 60000 the next year, so I'm going to amend it down and expensive. And, well, we're going to amend it down on both ends because we showed 100000 but we're not going to get that. And if you go over, if you don't get the revenues, it will be an exception, so we've got to show just the 40000 And then on the retained earnings, that's in water. That's for utility fees and uh, investment earnings. And what happened there, you know, we changed the rates. <coughs> The growth was still down on the economy, and people's been, I guess, conserving water because all the taps are down and all the building is down, so that's actually affected a lot of those revenues on that side. But we have a definitely time to run that's really going to affect everything. And hopefully, as the economy comes back, it'll improve. So usually, we always come out ahead on that, but it's been down about this about the second year because of the economy, actually. My, my pool's got a leak, so we'll be okay. Oh, well, that's good. I wish you'd tell me. <laughs> we can't adjust those now. <laughs> but that's it. If you have any questions, just ask me, and I'll try to explain. But what we do is use the sources is actually where we're going to get the money from, and then the uses would be to make sure it's balanced. And then actually change the total budget. Do we have a choice, Jane? Not really. You want to be legal. I move that we accept the budget amendment. Okay, thank you. Second. Any discussion? I'll pay a raise hand. Okay. All right, John. The recommendation of the town attorney to change signs on this condition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Each of you has in front of you an ordinance adopting certain amendments to the sign ordinance. Um, these are fairly technical changes that um, address some problems that uh, Mr. Bruno and I keep running into uh, in enforcement. Um, in section one of the ordinance, uh, that is to get at the problem that one, you really shouldn't have any particular amount of time to remedy the violation of having ignored the sign ordinance altogether. In other words, you know, you go out and don't get a sign permit and put up a, a sign 
we ought to be able to demand that it come down immediately before you take the correct steps to you know, let us see if it passes muster under the sign ordinance. Uh, we, even when they do, and for other violations, they want to shorten the, the amount of time to, to uh, comply with the, the ordinance to 10 days. It is at 30 days now. And the problem that we run into there is that sometimes you'll have somebody who's got a sign in violation and you ask them to change it but they have 30 days and then 30 days later you find that they may have changed it causes two more violations and then you've got another 30 days so um 10 days is, is really plenty uh, of time to, to address those types of <coughs> violations um and then section two of the ordinance is just to deal with um it's just really a very technical change to make clear that if multiple violations of the sign ordinance are on the same property they constitute and are separate um, violations and can be fined separately. Uh, really, this is to bring the sign ordinance method of enforcement into something that looks more like the UDOs. Uh, so th this is this is more similar to something you already have in place in, in the UDO. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, but um, I would uh, I would just recommend passage of this ordinance. Just procedurally, can we just pass these changes just for the vote tonight? Don't have to have any. Yes, sir, because um, this is a general police power uh, type of ordinance, not a land use, so it doesn't require any kind of uh, public hearing or, or notice or anything. So make a motion that the amendments be adopted. Okay. We have discussion. Thank you, John, for Mike, for that work. Now, we move on to number nine, consideration of award for the Battle Mountain Road sewer line extension. Sam, what you got? Okay. Um, we had our bid uh, opening. The bid tab and table was included in your agenda item. The low responsible bidder was certified by McGill to be uh, Iron Mountain Construction Company out of Mountain City, Tennessee, and in the amount of $333,089.68. This figure was higher than what we had been estimating going into this project up until about three months ago. And there was we had some good news at first in that we were going to be allowed to open cut uh, on the Colossasia for the line rather than having the bore. But the DOT sort of took that advantage away from us on the other end of the project by requiring us to have uh, a bore for the entire dimension of the four lane where this line crosses underneath. And we're not going to let us open cut alongside the uh, Wells Road Road line itself. The reason for it, I can understand, they stated, was one, they didn't want to have the sewer line right alongside the existing Wells Road Road underneath the bypass or the overpass in case they have to widen it to a four lane instead of the two, which I can understand. And then also that they were concerned that boring that close to the column piles that support the overpass uh, caused them some concerns and there were federal restrictions that the state now has to operate them. The net result to the town is that that added $130,000 to the cost of the project. So originally we had estimated going into it $200,000 uh, based on the engineer's estimate and uh, you'll see the result. And this is just another section, just another piece of the puzzle of our overall line necessary for expansion and uh, annexation. This line will, uh, is part of the eventual service provision for the entire Battle Mountain, Walmart, uh, Barry's Tire, um, Power Company property up there, and part of their old project. 
and the service area would extend behind that to that vacant land up above where the Walmart and Barry's Tire currently is. Um, and also, this will allow us to be able to get gravity flow access across the four lane to um, the uh, other properties on the other side of that. The sewer property, you know, which is, um, I forgot the name of the subdivision, but it's up there on top of the hill. But the uh, old amphitheater property and the power company coal yard and some others on the other side will eventually also be able to be served out of this, this project. Now, when this project is run to the, we stop our project at the edge of the DOT right away before you get to the Idle Mountain Wells Grove Road. Uh, Breitmeyer Development Company will, will be responsible to run to that for their water or for their sewer hookup as well as to run down the Wells Grove Road for access to the water. And as part of our negotiation with them, uh, the service heads for the, camp, for the town to go on up toward where the new construction is going to be from the, the side of the road interchange coming into the Dallas Mountain Road uh, will be now the driveway that Walmart is going to be cutting across the Barry's property to intersect into the new highway from the new uh, Dallas Mountain Road that's currently under construction. And that will then get the town past having to run through that construction zone as far as extending services eventually, probably about a year and a half or two years, depending on more usage of the way there to eventually to look into where we've got a water line coming across the side of the bridge. And we'll fairly quickly uh, recover some of our money in collection fees well, just as an example, uh, the, the assessment basically uh, to Breitmeyer, so their part of the hookup is $160,000, which would be coming from the town to the project. That's about half. And then it also adds a big leg of it. Yes. Well, yes. <coughs> so it's, we had hoped it would be better, but it is. I think it's necessary and we eventually have to provide that service around the Yeah, funding for it. Is that funding for everybody to bring money in the water to One other matter, just as a procedural matter, we <coughs> were asking for the board to award this tonight. We would not initiate the contract until July 1 because the funds for this are in next year's budget. Everybody's procedurally, but we won't sign the contract until July 1. It, it's an estimated completion period. How long the contract Well, the engineers say that it should be done in three months, but the you know, contractor, let me see, it'll probably be a five month project. The engineer's estimate was that given reasonable weather and whatever, that we should be finished by the time that the Breitmeyers is through with their filling project. And that's four and a half months, so that'll be the approximate time. Well, the board, a lot of money, but to make a motion to contract the engineer to hire them the construction. Around the three hundred thirty-three thousand, eighty-nine, sixty-eight cents. Second. Discussion. <coughs> All in favor, raise your hand. <coughs> Street closing request. The Arts Council. Who can fill us in on that? I want to tell the arts council we better not just pass it on because nobody's in here. <coughs> so I don't want to know about it. Um, I spoke with uh, Bobby Cantino. She had uh, emailed us to 
what they're wanting to do is on July, Friday, July the 1st, is to close portions, I believe it's Philip and Iola, um, for their annual rock and roll jam. It's not both. It's not both sides of that. No. Just fight right in front of your big people. Yeah. Right. Same one. Same one. Main Street. Main Street. I read that in the agenda that I left it. No, still bothered to stay in with award winning. We gotta let them do it, don't we? They bump it out. They do. They do a good job. They were closing the oven on July 2nd. Right. Mm -hmm. I always leave it something. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're going to fly early, start early, and have a longer jam. <laughs> also with the day after a major holiday, their fingers not going to be able to provide anybody to come on the 5th, and they didn't necessarily immediately tell us they could come on the 6th or the meeting in August or whatever. But uh, based on that, we are probably going to have to consider postponing uh, that portion of our program we have set until we can lock in getting somebody from FEMA present. But we're going to pursue it and well, make still, them. still pursuing about getting not only the state but the federal folks here to explain, first of all, their position about a number of issues that the towns have concerns with, but also to answer questions from questions from affected property owners. And, 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 and so, your your thoughts were maybe what September? I have, well, I, I think we could probably. Depending on how the weather runs, we could probably do it in August. Uh, I would try not to push it any farther back because then you're getting closer to hurricane, the heavy hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to incur we any did, more excuses. We, did get a, we were the locust cub. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we did get a, when I first started this, we did get approval that we would have two people from the team here, somebody about the mapping. Because that's that's an alternate route that we can take if the map is in dispute, we could possibly have them look at it as opposed to just the state. <coughs> and somebody to talk about the insurance program itself, somebody that had the answer who could say, yes, everybody's going to have to purchase, or no, you don't have to. Uh, or they want to deal with that. And then I had two people lined up from the state. One from the engineering department to deal with the map issue, and somebody else to explain any other questions about the state's impact on the insurance program. So those those were the four. I did get the call today from FEMA, and she's been trying to schedule people for the last month now. Um, lucky I haven't sent the notices out to everybody yet because there's there's 209 people that are involved in the, in the flood plan. And I want to do the notice because that truly is a, a, a land use issue if we decide to get into the program and then pass an ordinance. So I want to do the standard uh, zoning 10 to 25 day notice for even this meeting for that decision. So those those weren't even scheduled to go out until June 15th. To make that so I can, I can kick it back a month and, and if we want to look at August, um, if we have another reason to have a second meeting in July, we could possibly consider it for that. But I would need to know uh, so that they can start planning. August sounds good. Does that give you that? Um, 
first of all, find out if people can send somebody and say that there's somebody in there. And if the weather comes down a little bit, then they'll, they'll get a lot of their work cleaned up. Because they've had Region 4 out of Atlanta has had people in all of the states helping with the, with the disaster situation. So that's where we're at on that for now, folks. Okay. That's it, 730. Uh, we'll call the public hearing on the proposed budget for fiscal year 2011-2012. Call that open. We're hearing that. Does anybody here to speak uh, pro or con regarding the proposed budget for next year? All righty. Going once, going twice. All the public hearing closed and uh, put it on the board. <coughs> Um, I'd like to say that uh, normally I vote against the budget. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a protest vote, but a protest vote serves no purpose. I am still concerned about this 4% cost of living raise that benefits the highest paid employees more so than it does the uh, lower paid employees. I will continue to bring that argument every year as long as I live on this board. However, like I said, I don't think a protest vote would do any good. It would be a five in one vote. It usually is. So I'll make the motion we adopt the budget. And for those for, for those of you that may for those of you that may feel faint, Grubelman has been issued among you tablets. <laughs> Is there any storm out there? The lightning getting ready to go? Lightning would not strike this crap. I'm going to second that. <laughs> that motion of that call about the motion. Okay, we got Sam, one, one point I'd like to bring up for the board. Bob Poindexter came by this afternoon and he apologized for not having gotten back to the town earlier. But what he said was that they're planning to do, and they have the money in the bank to do it, in hand to do it, some more capital renovations to the museum building. And he was asking uh, some forbearance to see if he isn't going to be able to meet the deadline to get the money out this year from the remaining funds that the town had obligated to reserve, if you will, for the Historical Society. Uh, what he was asking if there was some way of getting access to those funds and what I simply recommended and I told him to take it to the board tonight was to amend the proposed budget for next year to allow the carry forward of those unspent funds about $7,500 worth in the next year's budget so that he would have the time to, to use uh, that in the, uh, you know, the, the expenditures for which this board had agreed for this fiscal year. That is to say, to reimburse the Historical Society for capital expenditures for the, for the bill. So, uh, Do I need to amend my motion to that show that? Yeah. You can okay. add that to it. Yeah, and I, I'll add that to my motion and it, it sort of brings up another thing. This may not be the time to do it. Uh, this business licensing thing, is that included in the budget or is that something I can talk to a little later? Well, both. Okay. It's included within the budget as an authorization, but it's pending final settlement and authorization by the alderman after discussion in the upcoming fiscal year. The reason I'm saying that, I have had numerous calls that I'm not sure that's been adequately explained to the businesses yet. Okay. Well, I think we have the vehicle for doing that when the board has a work session. So it's not by voting for this budget. That, that's You're not, not automatically putting it in the board. All right, then I'll let my motion stand with me on it. So the motion is the budget as proposed with the amendment to carry forward the $7,500 from the historical society. Absolutely. All in favor, raise your hands. Passes without objection. Good work, board. Even good, good work. Uh, as
getting to be the norm, we're running through me, it's pretty handling it's it not too we're bad. All very is anybody a reminder uh, also the board meeting next month by town charter is delayed from the holiday, which is Monday the fourth to Tuesday the fifth or so. We'll all come in face for some reason or other. Anybody got something pressing on the mind? Yeah, mm -hmm. of course I do. Uh, going back to this business permit, I think there has been a misconception with a lot of businesses, and, and I'm not sure if I understand this, not having businesses grossing less than $400,000, not having to have business taxes. And there is only, I have had, as long as I've been sitting on this board, I've had more calls on that than anything else. And I would just like to see us rethink this in a work session or whatever, and uh, see if we can't clarify this whole thing about why some businesses don't have to have a business license and some do. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's the ideal thing, and that's what we sort of anticipated doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and we'll have plenty of time to do it because it's not that's, we're not planning. The, the time frame would be January 1st, so there is adequately time. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go. Um, <coughs> Thank you. I'd, uh, in, since we got a new appointment to the board, and need something to do. Get a dirty job. So <laughs> on our own well, well, so, Welcome to the board. I would since I have several more, I'd like to relinquish my position on, on the fire department and make a motion that this uh, the board appoint Farrell Jameson to that position. I guess you might say it though too quick, Farrell. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'll just say That's fine. Motion to second to put Farrell on there and pull Barlow off. All in favor, raise your hand. Yes, that's it, Farrell. <laughs> yes, that's it. I thought it was going to be the, the real world. rule of law or something like that. So, so Farrell, what do you have in your defense? T tell us what your goals are. That's what you're here for. Okay. Well, uh, now I'm learning a lot about uh, you know, the different projects and stuff. Uh, I have a very high interest in economic development in the industry and working with the economic development group years ago. And I worked with the industry training program in Southwestern. So uh, I hope uh, that uh, you know, the board continues to work planning on what Franklin's going to look like for the next 10 to 20 years. I think now's the right time to be working on that. We can't wait for things to fall apart when we have to do the I'm very much interested in that also. Oh, good. We're looking forward to it, though. We appreciate you. Uh, any other committees or that can serve on them? I'd like to do so. Right. I'll actually stop the sentence earlier. <laughs> you <know what? laughs> Okay, it's good to have Thank you. Motion to adjourn? We have that July the first. Everybody's having something July, but we're going to have a lunch in there at Fat Lady. It'll be at noon. I'll tell you that it's the closest that all of you are invited. You know, it'll be back with good order and certain things off the menu. It's always very tough. Well, that's July 1, but we're not closing down this really. <laughs> <laughs> We can do a parade or something. All the vegetables. We ought to. Planting new grass. Well, it doesn't serve any purpose except to close. Makes us feel important. Somebody gets out of here. So moved. So, all the family. Good meeting. Good meeting.